Hello everyone. Welcome in Advanced MS Excel conducted by bi-analytics.org. I am Saurabh Jain. Uh, till now we have done 17 tutorials and today is a tutorial number 18 where we'll talk about tables which is a foundation for next generation business intelligence. A table was introduced into an Excel which is a new feature. So we'll walk through today of tables. So this will be our foundation for the next coming up series of lectures like pivot tables, power pivot, power bi, everything has a part of a table included in it. So it is important to understand the fundamentals of tables. So hope you will enjoy this video lecture. Let's begin. Table is a specially designed area of the worksheet where you designate a range as a table. Excel give it special properties that make certain operations easier and they help to prevent errors. The purpose of table is to enforce some structure around your data. So let's understand first of all what actually table is. We talk about SQL database, so they have a tables. So same way the tables is, let's talk through some terminology what is called field or transaction record or data points that will give you an idea. Let's consider this a table which has an order ID order date, unit cost, price, order quantity, cost of sales, sales, profit, channel. So these are the table headers when we talk about. So let's walk into this table and try to understand how it works. Let's open the tutorial number 18, Excel sheet for you all. Fine. So this is a table. So you see the order ID. So this is called a field. Order ID is a field. And small value, any value, say this is 304, this is 9. These are the data points in the table. Fine. So this is actually a range right now. We always work in Excel in a range, right? Right now this is not a table. But what I want to say is, if this is a table, this is like a column A, which is a field called order ID. So it has same type of formatting, same type of formulas, everything is similar, fine. This is order date. So this is date for particular transaction. If you talk about a particular transaction, if you say the row, this is the row, row number two. So you know that this is a particular transaction of a sale transaction. So this is a record, what we call record. So we should know that this is a data points of a similar transaction. So say there is a transaction order ID whose price was 304 like this. So we need to understand how this all work. So first of all now we understand how to make a table. This is important. Thing. Okay. So what our objective is to understand how to make a table, what are the properties in the table and what are the advantages we will go when we will start working in the table. So let's start. First of all, there is an option insert. In insert, there is an option called table. Fine. So you see insert and there is an option called table. So when you click on this table, it will ask you something and there's a shortcut control plus, plus T. So I recommend that you always press the shortcut control plus T. Fine. Okay. So I click on this insert. Then I got an option create table. It has a, it has identified the range and it says my table has a head, headers. So I'm telling the Excel that my table has a header. I click OK. Just a minute. I did a mistake. I clicked it over somewhere. So look, this is my cell. I say insert table. I click OK and here it becomes a table. So now this is a table. Now table have specific properties which we'll talk about. First of all, right now we are into table design, right? If you talk about table design, we have colors. We can change the colors of our table. We'll, we'll talk about this later on. But let's see. First of all, it has given a name to us as a table 2. So we can change this table name first of all. 
because say they have there are 10 tables one is sales table one is hr table one is marks table one is salary table so you might get confused with table 1 table 2 table 3 name so it's always better to rename it so i can say i can rename it like order table don't use space you can use space in the names but i recommend and this is the best practice is do not use space in the name because else when you use writing formulas you have to put them in inverted commas which we'll talk about later on but best thumb rule is never use space in the table name fine so this is like so now see first was the table name now there is a resize table you can resize this table there is a the option if you click on this like this and you'll do like this you can resize it right now i'm not doing it but there is a the option to resize the table fine let's go remove duplicates convert to range so if i click on convert to range our table will again convert into range let's do it convert to range it says do you want to convert to range i say yes so my table has changed but formatting has not been changed fine so we may need to do in some different way that we can change the formatting first or do it again so i will now press again control plus t control t so you will see my table has a headers i click open so here comes the table we have once again a table now see we can remove duplicates as we used to do there is a option of removing duplicates there is export now there is a header row if i remove this header row right now this is telling this is this is a header because we clicked on my table has a header so it, it knows that it has a header into it total row now total row is what it will automatically total so if i click on total see what happens there is another row has been added into this now this has formulas so when you talk about say sales region and i i select sum so it will automatically do the sum for me this is the total row so this works smartly for us we can use we have formulas none average count count numbers max min and then more functions and you can go into your own excel functions so this is way it works cancel so you can apply not only sum you can apply many formulas say variance max minimum number of counts you can do all these things fine so this is the total row has been already included in the table now we have banded rows what this banded row means is you have a uh, it gives you a visibility in reading the data it's like alternate colors if i remove if i untick this see what happens is not changing surprise the formatting has been done anyways if i say banded columns see what happens so the columns has become alternate colors like this so this is how it works if you click on last column it will give you a formatting in the last column see it has changed the color so this all depends on the type of excel design you have used if it has a option it will give you filter button if i remove this filter button you will not see any filter button in this if you select it again you will see a filter button so by this you can filter your data and when you filter your data your sum will change accordingly so this is how the table works fine now we'll start writing a formula we'll try to understand how actually the table works okay let's talk about some designs also before that so you go into this now there are options like there might be some good colors there might be bad colors it might be ugly but it's better you can okay what happens is uh, if you remember uh, we change the formatting we change the tables again and again so it's not showing the correct data to us what i'll do is i say clear right now still not changing it because what we have done is 
earlier we were doing experiment to show it to you. What I'll do is I'll put this data, control C. Let's make a another sheet. Because we made the table twice. First we convert it to range if you remember. So I say paste values. So look, this is the data. Now I press control T. I put put OK. So this is my table. Now see. When I change it to now different colors, it will change. Fine. So now if you want to convert it to range, better is what you can do is first of all, you can clear it out. There's an option. Clear. So it, it is stable but it, it has no formatting. Now you convert it to change. So you, the blue formatting will disappear always. So now you can have your own choice of formatting in the Excel like this. There are options. You can also go and clear your own table style. It's like there are options you can format it out, fill it out, same formatting options. Say okay. And once you do this, you have to save it out. Set as a default. If you will click a set as a default, it will become your default. I am cancelling it right now. Fine. Okay. So this is how it actually works. So this was all about styling the sheets. You can always clear your style with this. And if you want to remove your table to back again to cell, what I recommend is first clear it and then convert to range. So this will give you a better idea. Fine. Okay. Let's move. Now we can formulas we enter in the table and formulas we enter in the range are different. When you enter a formula in a table in any column, it will be automatically updated whenever there is a new data entered into cell. So now we will see how this happens. Let's go into the formula sheet. Now see, we have this data. Name, units, revenue. We have some names, we have some units and we have some revenues. Fine. So what I'll do is, I'll first convert into table as usual. Control T. My table has a headers. Yes, I has. Now table name is five. So I can say revenue table. Fine. Mm -hmm. Or I say REV table. Okay. So this is my table. Now I do not have a totals. So first I'll insert total goals. So it says that my revenue is this much it has already counted up. Let's check the formula. Yes, it is correct formula sum. No units. It is again like I can say sum. Fine. So this is how it works. Now suppose imagine I also have a formula is a in this I say is equals to S U M sum bracket open and I click entire data. So now because this formula is linked to table instead of range, see, it will say some rev revenue. We'll uh, discuss it later on. But right now it has been linked. So what happens is, say, if I enter two more rows into it, say, saw up tab, and I say 688 units and say price is 90,000. So sum is automatically changed. See, sum is automatically changed. So this is the way when we use into table, it automatically changes the formulas. Fine. Now I'll tell you another thing. Say I add another column which says unit price. Unit price enter. So it has taken this as a formula. Now smart thing is when I enter a formula in the first cell is equals to revenue divided by unit. Fine. I click enter. See it has filled all the formulas in the column. So now every time you insert a new data, you don't have to put the formulas. Formulas, formatting, everything will come accordingly. So this is smart thing. Mm -hmm. See I write. 
10, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 0, 0. And say so you want to say average. So you can say average. So this is the average unit price I am having right now. Like this. So this is how the formulas automatically updates in the Excel. Fine. You can always say if I remove that, I go into this table design and I remove total row from it. So look, this is a data cell that you can easily drag to make it a add columns, rows like this. You can do it like this. Control Z. And suppose you write RIA tab. So it will automatically take the new rows. So it's quite easy and quite comfortable. The best part is that it prevents lots of errors which can actually happen. So this is fantastic thing. So this is how uh, the formulas are being automatically updated into the Excel. Fine. So now let's try something different. Now I'll talk about charts. Look, say you have some data and you want to plot a chart. And every time a new data is added, what you need to adjust your uh, ranges to reflect the same data into chart, uh, charts. See, this is my chart data. If I click like this and I say insert chart, recommended charts. This is just the data, say, uh, gas prices. So for, for every month, I have a gas price and I make a chart. Fine. I click OK. So this is my chart. Now thing is, when you see this chart, this is your the last date. Now if I enter a new data into this cell, say I enter this number, say I enter January 06 tab and I say 7.8. So this has not been added into the cell. It is again like so you need to drag it out if you want to get this ad like this, right? So you don't have to do like this. What I say is control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. So smart thing is make this data your table. Control T. My table has a headers. Now say name it. Guess price, right? Now when you insert a chart, insert recommended charts, so now you should add some data into it, look what will happen. If now you enter a data, say, escape, I add, January, 05 56. See, the data has been already entered into this. So this is why the best practice is now whenever you are making a chart, whenever you are making anything, first make it a table and then use it in a charts, pivot table everywhere. So name it out so it will be quite easy for you to understand how data is working, which data table it is. You can see like if I go into this table, in table design, I have an option, it says guest price. So it's quite easy uh, referencing and it makes it again error free. Whenever you add a data, new data will automatically get updated. And this is very handy when you're working daily updating few products. Fine? Okay. So let's talk about slice and filters. Slices and filters. Again, like uh, we did uh, in a couple of uh, before uh, tutorials, something like makeup exercise. The same data is here. This is a data set transaction number. I'll show you. You have transaction numbers, name, date, products, units, locations. So I again press Control T and make it a table. My table has a headers. Fine. So here comes the table. You can even change the color if you like this one. Okay. Now see the magic. So now say you want to identify, okay, right now we don't have a, okay, we have a total rows already added. 
so this is the total of the dollars the sales dollars fine now you want to say say i want to identify the name of the product is uh, my sales executive is cc or say coffee okay and see my product is lip gloss my product is lip gloss okay and see location is east see how much has been the sales in the east region to put okay and look here is a data available for you smartly now you put a total row into it you go into this table design and you say total rows so you have a total available now and you can say like sum so this is the revenue now you filter it and it will come like this you change the location from east to say mid east click okay and you have data changing accordingly and you can get the subsequent total revenue whatever the parameters you are using to evaluate your table data so this is how filtering can done same way we can sort the data say you want to say units largest to smallest so it will change the data largest to smallest this is quite easy and handy again in the table format fine okay this also shows in which filters has applied so you can say clear filters test filters clear filter from name so it will give you all data like this so this is how your filter works now i'll talk about slicers slicers are quite interesting thing sometimes you are not easy applying filters like changing the things so you have a option of slicers let's see how slicers works i can remove first of all clear filters so you have a table ready now say i want to apply slicers so i go into table design you have a option insert slicers i click insert slicers now it is asking you what type of slicers you need say i want product and i want location these are two slicers i am taking so i go to this so now see i have these slicers available i can put them over here so i tell you how the filtering will be actually done so if you click lipstick and you say west so this is the data for lipstick west if you click lip is gloss and you say south the data change accordingly so this is quite interesting thing and say if i also add a slicer to name also name okay and i say ashley so my data change like so only uh, concern about this slicer is that it takes lots of space in the excel uh, screen so sometimes it might not be easy you can always drag and drop you can make it larger you can make it smaller even you can do into two to three columns like if you go into this you have a slicer designs available so number of columns how many you want you can do it say two so this will come in two columns you can use control to select multi thing multi options control and shift as we are doing in other things also slicers we also talked earlier so the idea is to tell you that slicers are also available in the excel so this was the things now there are smart thing we'll talk about uh, the things will come about dax formulas in the excel right now i'm not uh, converting talking anything about dax but yes how to refer a portion of a table so you have a data and you have to refer a portion of a table so how you do it so there are some of the dax formulas so some uh, you can talk about first of all if you refer the table name with table name it will give you the exact table second is hash all cells in the table including the total row hash all will talk everything uh, let me tell you about when you talk about table name all cells in the table excluding the header and total rows header and total rows will not come when you talk about table name let's do practically side by side to make you understand how it works let's go into this refer i have this data available first of all i will make it a table i say control t my table has a headers okay so this is the table now i name it as sales 
So this is my sales table. So interestingly, if you want to see that, if you're going to define name managers, okay, look, it didn't convert into sales. I have to click sales and press enter. Then it will convert into sales. So now this table is as a name sales, right? Okay. So if you go into name manager, say in formulas, you go into name man, name manager. So you can see all the names. So like you have a sales table available. It will tell you everything. What are the gas price and everything, right? Fine. So you can see that table is also referring to actually a region and range. So this is my table. Now I want to extract some portion of it. So how we do it? So first of all, I told you, if I say is equals to sales, sales is my table's name, right? Let's see. First of all, I say table name. I'll put it here to make you understand. I say table name. I say is equals to SALES sales and I press enter. So look, entire sales table has been come, but without the header, there is no header. Okay. And I don't have this, uh, what we say, total row interest. So let me add total row. So look. So this table, sales table has given me everything just except headers and total rows. Hope you understand. This was the headers. Fine. And this was my total rows. So it has given it like this. Now let's see another thing. So table name, all cells in the table, excluding the headers and total rows. Look, now what I want to tell you is, say you want to identify total number of items, how you will do it? If I use a sale name formula and I say is equals to count A, count all, which is a formula. I say count A, bracket open, and I say sales, fine. And so look, this comes 45. Actually, this is 45. This count is 45 to see. Fine. So this, there are 45 items in this. It has done the formula for us. So referring a portion of a table means not pasting the table, but you can evaluate some count a various formulas into it. So my objective is to tell you how we are referring it. Then you can always use in another formula like count a sum. Fine. So this was how to use a table name formula. Now let's do something else. What's the second one? Hash all. All the cells in the table, including the total row. So it will say hash all will include everything. Let's do it. Now how to use hash all. So first of all, we use the table name. Then we'll put square bracket and put hash all. Let's see how it will be done. So I'll just make it a better for you to understand. So I want to show you how to use hash all. Hash So now we will use hash all. So what I say, I say is equals to, fine. I say S A L E S sales. Now I am putting a, opening a square bracket. Square bracket. Now here are the options. So I can say hash all, fine. And I will close the square bracket. And I say enter. So see. So with hash all, you get everything other than the header. So in hash all, we get the total row also. We get the header also, we got everything, fine. So first of all, in table name, we only got the data, no headers, no total rows. In hash all, we got header also and total also, fine. So this was this. Hash data, all the cells in the table except the first row and the total rows. Hash data will all the cells in the table except the first row and the total rows. Let's do that also. So I say is equals to sales, I'll open square bracket and say hash data. 
to square bracket close enter here comes now you can apply count a sum a something whatever you want to apply but yes this is how it's done fine so this is how hash data will be used let's move ahead now you have hash headers say if you want to put uh, extract only the headers hash headers see so i say hash headers so i say is equals to sales square bracket open now i say hash headers and see the magic square bracket close enter so i got all the headers of the table like this so this is how we can even refer our headers now you can also count which can tell you how many columns are in this table fine so this headers can tell you if you count a let's do it is equals to count a bracket open now a square bracket hash sorry count a then first of all you say the table name sales square bracket you say hash hash h e a d e r s headers now square bracket close and your bracket of count a enter so it's still there are five columns into the your excel table sales table fine so this is how you can do this also let's move to next hash totals just the total row if there is no total row this returns an empty cell range so hash totals will refer all your totals now you want to sum all the totals to put sum into it so it will give you grand total let's see let's do it over here hmm. i say hash total we have to do right is equals to first of all sales square bracket open now i say hash totals square bracket close enter so here comes the answer now say if i want to sum this also so here comes the answer now if you want to sum all these values as well so you put a sum formula into it and it will give the total of total so this is interesting way of how to we can do the data handle now this is add add or hash this earlier we used to use hash this but now we can use add it it refers to all the table entries in the current row current row means let's see add the rate right so say i go over here this is my table so which is my row right now 7th row i apply a formula here is equals to this will be a little tough there's no spacing so let me give some space first insert insert I should do it. Where should I show? Sorry. I need how many columns? Now see. So now I want to say add the rate, add this, add the rate. I want to use formula. So I say is equals to S A L E sales square bracket, and I say add the rate. So 
as soon as we put hash so this is refer to all the data into this so this is how you can extract a particular row also with the help of add the rate so now if you put sum into this it will give you the sum of this entire row let's see i put it i say s u m sum so here comes the sum hash sum sales at it gives you a sum for this so you select like this it will tell you that this is my range like this so this is how you can refer various portions of a table say i'll also refer one column how to refer entire column let's do this also do that see i want to refer q1 q3 q1 q2 q3 all these three columns i want to extract these three columns let's do it i say is equals to sales square bracket fine and this time i'll use two square brackets why i say hash data i want only data square bracket close now i put comma and i say q1 q1 in my header name so i say bracket open q1 square bracket close colon i put colon square bracket q3 square bracket close and again square bracket close and your blue sign says the formula has become correct i press enter and see i am able to extract these data i can sum also i can do count a also and anything so let's try to understand this formula again what i have done is hash is equals to sales hash data comma q1 in square bracket q3 in square bracket and colon sign like q1 to q3 all the first column and last column all the columns so like this with the help of comma you were able to extract the data like this hope you enjoyed this session so this was just the beginning of something bigger which will happen in this course i look forward for your presence hope please do write comments and and most important thing i request you all please download this file from bi-analytics.org i'll give you a simple template file and whatever thing i have done with you please do together one by one so that will give you an idea how we are performing all these things fine it is important to practice it out because once we will practice then we'll have some more tough exercises also coming up and i have a one question for you that i want to take one zoom session for all of you all who are been with me for a time so what i need is that if you can write in the comment yes or i want to join you in zoom first of all so we can understand whatever we have done till now are you having difficulty or you are finding some problems so i can help you with one to one session say some problem sessions so we can talk and discuss are you able to understand my tone you want me to speak a little slow or fast whatever the things are so we can try to understand all these things and yes please make sure to register the website bi-analytics.org and uh, join this club of business intelligence and excel because that is the way then only you will be able to download the files and this is free sign up so nothing has to be paid for it or like this fine so i hope you will enjoy this thing and i say once again that just a minute just make sure to do the things with your hands because if you will not do anything with hands nothing will happen so make sure to join the website bi-analytics.org join the club and if you have any questions please ask in the problems if you have any problem that we have not studied go ahead in the forum and ask it there are so many people who will be happy to help you out fine okay so let's meet in another lecture thank you very much for now